The Art of Man TT might be famous for two wheels, but that's not the only thing you will see compete during the two week festival. Celebrating a century since they first appeared this year, sidecars have an almost as rich history as the bikes at the TT. The three wheeled machines see the driver position kneeling behind the engine with their hands near the front wheel, while the passenger moves around on the platform at the rear, transferring the weight from left to right in line with the corner and forward or back to gain traction the front or rear. The setup sees the pair having to work together with the best partnership ending up on top. Apart from racing at the TT as well, the cycles also can be seen in the World Championship with strong British and French championships domestically. But back to the TT. In 1923 the sidecars were introduced with seven entrants, battling over three laps around a slightly different 37.739 mile or 60.74 kilometer mountain course compared to today. Freddie Dixon and his passenger Walter Denny won using a special Douglas motorcycle, winning an average speed of 53.15 miles per hour. The fastest lap during that race was set by Henry Langman and Claude Temple on board their Scott Skrill for a 54.69 mile per hour or 41 minute and 24 second lap. I know there would be the only retirement of the race on the second lap. Dixon would also be the first competitor to win in the sidecars and bikes at the TT following his 1927 Junior TT win on board a HRD before retiring from racing the following year. Joining Dixon in winning would be George Tucker and Walter Moore and then Norton the following year and then Ed Parker and Ken Hortzman on a Douglas before sidecars would be dropped the following year due to a lack of entries. However, the sidecars would return in 1954 when the TT was part of the Grand Prix Motorcycling World Championship. The race on the Clipsy course though, with four-time world champion Eric Oliver and his passenger Les Nutt winning on their Norton at 68.87 miles per hour, head of the BMWs which would go on to dominate the event until the 70s. The sidecars would assume race on the mountain course in 1960 with further changes coming that decade. Normally limited to 500cc, these machines in 1968 had a non-championship 750cc race introduced with Terry Vinicombe and Jay Flackman winning the race at 85.85 miles per hour on their BSA machine compared to the 500cc BMW of Sigrid Schultzu and H. Snyder winning at 91.09 miles per hour that year. Further changes will come in 1975 when the cars became a 1000cc engine class and the following year they started to have two race events. Then the class changed to its current formula in 1990 with a four stroke 600cc engines, three stroke 675cc and 900cc power twin engines allowed now. Drivers to dominate in this formula include Rob Fisher with 10 wins from 1994-2002 and the Manx Man. Dave Mononoo, having the most wins in the class of 17 from 1989 to 2014. The current kings on the mountain though are the virtual brothers, Ben and Tom, with 13 wins since 2013, including the last 10 sidecar races consecutively. They are on a run. Recently they became the first pair to break the 120 mile per hour lap mark in their last victory as well. In the first TT we'll be using the most powerful sidecar available in the game from Bound Riders Crew. With 151 horsepower, all the vehicles have 600cc inline force in the engines. I know this vehicle has a bit less acceleration, kind of in the middle and braking and handling as well. But it's proved to be the quickest in practice and so we're in it to translate that pace to the race. Here we go then, we're underway for the first sidecar race. As we have three laps ahead of us, just over an hour, the side will win and break the reins of the virtuals. These virtually, mainly because they're not in the race as well, which you know, that definitely does help, but... 
Let's see what we can do. Let's open it up just to be a bit cautious. Into the first heavy brake in front of Quarter Bridge. And a bit more rear brake than I've been doing in practice, but we're getting around there smooth enough. You are going to say I'm going to miss lots of apexes. Because the key's not really to hit them in this. It's more like just to be as smooth as possible round the corner. And help demonstrate that. That's why we're you know, racing in third person here as well. So we can see what the passenger does. Because the cycle is a bit more unique. You can see this what the super bikes by having two people here having to work in unison. Got the driver and the passenger who deals with all the weight transfer. And that's why this vehicle is perhaps one of the toughest I've had to learn in a game or sim. It's because of its unique challenges it brings. In a game where everything is lightweight as well. My god, I could not believe how lightweight like the super sport bikes were and the super bikes. I'm trying to like get away sometimes I'm just wean into the air. Lucky you don't have the wean issue with the sidecars. It's more about just being smooth with the sidecars. Just have to be delicate with all your inputs. Like everything is very deliberate as you go through bad or scary, which very scary not opening an app of a TT. So that's why when I open that we're going to be a bit cautious then on the second app we'll push it a bit more and then the third app you know going to be all out you know be flat through St. Nevian's Crossroads and Bray Hill flat through Bala Scary maybe and so on the final all that as so we push for victory and push to the finish let's go through Crosby and see some of, some of these bumps as well you won't really see them affecting the cycle because of, you know the bit more weight they've got than the bikes but some of the bumps can just spin you, can just catch you out, so we'll have to lift over some of them later in the lap. Well, and the early part is to go through. Or past Greba Castle. A section of that pier here, so we head towards the bridge as well. But yeah, we're going to find it difficult. You, you will see the passengers, they are moving by themselves. But I do have it set to auto, we got lucky they're hitting that pavement as well. Well, they're on semi-auto, so I can take over if I want sometimes. Because as you can see, sometimes the passengers can be a bit undecided of what they want to do. Which can lead to crashes, and you'll see... I've got a bit of a weakness as well, like 95% of my crashes are through right hand bends such as this badder crane bend. That's oh my god, saved it. Thought it spun out there, as you saw I got on the power a bit too much. When the weight was like on the rear of this cycle, and that's what happens, you can spin out like that, you can just crash it easily by putting the power on slightly too much, by having the weight slightly off, so your passenger's not leaned all the way over to one side or not. Just be cautious through there, like, through there, like, you get some balanced over the, go, the rise and then going down, so that's why we're going to be a bit cautious there as we go through the whole bank as well, again, almost spinning and saving it. It's always tough on the first lap as well, trying to get up to speed when you have to be up to speed immediately in a TT. There's no like, oh, I'll just have a bit of a size to the first lap. No, you've got to, <laughs> I've got to hit, in practice hitting around 20 minutes, I've got to hit that immediately. I've got to be consistently hitting around 20 minutes as well as hit, hit through Glen Helen. That is our target for each race at 20 minutes. Because if we do that, we're going to finish very well. Do you throw on the leaderboards? That'd be like world record as well. <laughs> At the moment, I'm only eighth on the leaderboard with my toys trophy time, so I've got quite a lot of improvement to do. Let's go past Sarah's Cottage now, head towards the Quonkia Body Strait. 
And for these first races where you will see like full HUDs and everything, but for the second races there'll be no HUDs because there will be cockpit cam or, you know, first person view. So for this second race, you're going to be in cockpit cam. As you go through Modern, who's the most successful sidecar racer. Dave Modern, who's still racing at 60 as well this year. But he has 17 wins in the sidecar class, the fourth most in TT issue for overall wins as well. Not far, not far behind modern greats such as Michael Dunnup and John McGuinness as well. We are tied at the moment of recording. Of course, they're a couple behind the legendary Joey Dunlop as well. As they go through Bargaro, as you can see, very, very cautious. And then the bottom of the Garrow, which is normally frightening, I would say, on the bike. It's not so bad on a sidecar. Unless you get unbalanced. That's the first of many, isn't it? See that problem there again? That, that was a left-hander. Rare, a rarity, I know, but again, it was just too light. I just not have the rate white. I didn't have time to react as well to correct my passenger. So by the time we were crashing, that's by the time I had to, I knew how to correct the passenger. Let's go through Westwood, heading on towards Kurt Michael. So yeah, that is. That is the major difficulty with the sidecars. In the game with everything where it's, it's too lightweight, you've also got something which is so insanely sensitive to the weight distribution that as I said I've got I've got a technique of where I trail break. I'm breaking I'm trail breaking through the whole corner. Like I'm holding A for the whole corner just to make sure there's no sudden movements and weight transfer and Everything will be solid, as in you're going to see some unusual corners, especially through some tight right-handers, where I'm not going to be aiming for the apex, I'm just going to be aiming to be as smooth as possible to go around the corner. So, it's going to be some unusual lines, but as long as we don't crash like that, we keep it clean, we should aim, we get that 20 minute lap time, we get that consistently this race, so there would be you look at maybe a TT win already. But very early days, we're less, less than a sit for away through the race. You've got to be very careful through these corners as well. Very high speed corners, you can't be flat out in this. You think you can? Well, there's a bump there, we were lucky there. But, no, if you're flat out in a cycle, again, as I said, because of the lightweightness. Passenger aspects. And the tyres just losing grip on the dime. Like, you're just spinning it up and flipping. As you've already seen already. I've shown you the example of what, what can go wrong. For a high speed corner. Let's try and avoid that. As I said, sometimes it can feel even worse at low speed. Like, through. Not so much a Ramsey hairpin, but the Solby Bridge corner, which is coming up. It's already a very tough corner normally anyway because of the massive curb on the inside and you've got a very narrow window to feed your vehicle through. Let's go through Corey Benz. Before the Solby straight. There we go. Now we head into hyper speed time. And halfway round the lap as well. It's fastest point. I mean, in game, we're only reaching on this cycle, maybe what, 160 at most? As I said, very difficult Solby Bridge corner. We got through there cleanly first time around in Ginger Hall, which is not too bad, but it feeds into a section which is high speed, is scary. Very easy 
easy to mess up through as well. And so after this left turn, you've got a little bump as well past this. Is it barn or farmhouse? Which on the bikes can very easy to crash over, but on a cycle like it's you've got the lift. No doubt, as I said again, to keep that weight right, but it's not so bad. Flat out before we have to lift for the tight corner. Oh no, I thought we saved it. Oh, he did break for the tight corner, he just did it a bit too early. <laughs> As you go through Churchtown. And now we're heading towards Ramsey. And again, you've got these blind corners with the trees acting as a canopy overhead. Light flickering through the trees. It's a bit disoriented, I imagine, in real life. But I guess you get used to it as well. But be very cautious through here as well. This is a corner that's crazy to catch you out you want again you want to go quicker than you think you can through there but there you go he survived in one piece and now his head towards schoolhouse corner one of his famous corners on the circuit there's that bus lay by on the outside as well use a bit of that I ideally you don't want to be using it and then parliament square another again another tricky right hand corner got to slow down for I just got it all the way down to first, and I'm going to just get it all the way down to second. I do not want to use second. And then maybe the trick is caught on the sidecar. I can see we slid it down nice and early because you're going uphill. Very easy to understeer through there. As we head towards Ramsey Airpin for the first time. lots of rear brake and this is actually similar to say like the governor's bridge corner at the end of the lap maybe not as tight but as we can get through Ramsey with hairpin quite easy but you're gonna see if the governor's bridge corner that is incredibly tough to get through inside got literally have to grind to a halt as we go through the waterworks Again, that right hand, a very easy to outbreak yourself. You've got to be very cautious and slow through there. Just got to make sure hitting our marks. So now we make our way towards the famous gooseneck corner as well with the massively chunky curb on the inside. Again, we stay in second. It's not as bad this corner though because you can get on the power quite early. You can see again, I'm like turning in like two or three movements rather than just one smooth movement like you would on on the super bikes, the super sport bikes. Again, just trying to be as smooth as possible around the corner. Just feed the bike or sidecar through. Let's head into Jerry's. Got a beautiful landscape here now as you head into the countryside and again, an incredibly far section of the track. Interrupted here by Guffney's Memorial. And then the third. Well, the thing I've kind of learnt in practice is that for these right handers, I've just got the brakes so early and just carry speed through it. I think we did really well through that corner. That's now we're up Mountain Mile and then flat out. I guess for how long for. But time wise, we're doing very well. Considering standing start, first lap. I thought I'd have a lot more issues than this as well on the opening out. I thought there'd be more crashes. Had a couple of near crashes as well, a couple of spins. Which aren't ideal. Uh, this is a lovely corner as well, this just shift it down the fifth and then you can get on the power almost instantaneously almost like brandish corner for the sidecars in real life where you get it down the fifth and you're on the power 
almost immediately. Oh no! And there goes the bump. Luckily the Psychot at the brunt of the force there. Because I was about to say, this corner is very bumpy. <laughs> Head towards the veranda. That's okay. Again, we're still again aiming for that 20 minute at that time. Again, can be difficult round there as well. Again, another right hander. Aiming towards the black cut and the bungalow. Second so fifth through the left. Very bumpy as all these corners kind of. I don't feel as much in the cycle as the bites, but you can still see it out. and it still affects you in the same way as well. Get the go response a bit too quickly. Uh, so up Halewoods Heights. And after the injury, Mike the bike. And then the corner that everyone seems to hate. For for, for, any, for cycle. On a bike. Brandy well. You, again, a corner you think you can maybe take a bit quicker, but it's got a tight entry. It's tight, tight through the corner as well. Let's now we go through Dukes. This wonderful free left hander. And then windy corner. Again, another corner got to break so early for, because you need to be close to this apex. As I said, another right hander. Another tricky right hander as well, so. Be curdy though. Can be very smooth. But yeah, Brandy, well, it's just incredibly tricky corner. See all those bollards around as well, there's like no room for error. Same with Keppel Gate here. Got a break early. Let the cycle roll in. But then when you're past the Past the AP, it's gone to power meaty. Go past Kate's Cottage. Down was the very popular Craig Nabar. You see the people on the mounds and hills around. We toast in the pub as well. Again, another right hander. Very bumpy right hander as well. So, again, we've got to be. You see, take our two or three bites of the tray around the corner. This is where we're starting to think, oh, I've got this thing of home now. Still have ended his first lap, but he's still got some crazy corners ahead, such as Brandish Corner, which it's not like down the gear here, it is just a slight lift and sit. Maybe flat out later in the race, but again, opening that, just want to make it through in relatively yeah, one piece as you head towards Hillberry. Down to four, just slowly feeding the power. But down to fourth. Get back up to sit. There's we go through the left for signpost. And then break again very early because again, right hander. One we do trick around as well. Nursery bends. Ford and Hook. Again, another right hander we've got to break early for. Because you've got the pavement on the right as well, which kind of sticks out a bit. And here we go Governor's Bridge. I told you earlier, this is like a very tough corner. Let's see. Cycle almost flipping. We're going to make it round. Oh, not quite. It's not too bad, not too bad. It's a good opening lap. I told you we're aiming for like 20 minutes. And down onto the start, finish straight in, onto the second lap. There's going to be around a 20, 20 minutes, 30 seconds. I'll definitely take that for an opening lap from a standing start. Probably wouldn't take that in real life. <laughs> like nowadays, they're, they're pushing, what, 120 mile per hour laps. 
Just got the line slightly wrong there, so I had to lift recently in the ends. Can take Bray Hall flat though. Oh yes we can. But yeah, they're pushing what's it like low 19 minutes? And on an individual, like, I'm third on the leaderboard, so for that time, around 20 minutes. So, you can see how maybe drastically wrong the side cars are hit. Compared to real life, but they... Once you get the hang of it, they... I wouldn't say they're fun, but <laughs> they're not too bad to ride or drive. Let's go over Brandon Bridge. Down all the way to second here. This time, I tried third. Didn't seem to work as well. But this is where we start to, you know, build a bit more confidence as well. Push for around 20 minutes that time as well. And so that's my PB. That's the gold standard. We're around 20 minutes, around an hour. That's That means we're doing very well. But if we don't hit it, that's okay. As long as we're like between 20 minutes, 20, 30. Like we're on that opening lap. Still be right in the hunt. The end of this race. Now everything should be okay with the bike as well. We're starting to get our rhythm as well of that opening lap. So the confidence should flow slightly more. We're going to slightly lift again. Bad as scary, especially on the exit as we kind of almost went straight into the barrier. Yeah, that was very nice. Well, a passenger would have loved that. Maybe could have intervened with the passenger. Again, if I intervene, it's going to be like too sharp the movements. That's why I'm scared to do it. Even though I can see, oh, the passenger's not in the right position slightly, but... That means we're going to understand lift like we were, you know, through Bad Scary. But through Crosby, you can see Naya lift. Basically flat out from Bad Scary to breaking for the Griba section here. Get it all the way down the fourth. And the big thing for me is just not crashing. So I'm gonna, I don't mind sacrificing the bit of that zone just to keep it a bit cleaner. Like we did on that open that only crashed two times or three times or something in the end. Which is among my best in practice. I don't think I've ever had a clean up in practice, so. Again, I think the best is maybe like two crashes on a lap, so. We can be consistent like that, around 20 minutes, two crashes per lap. We're gonna be very happy. Might be a different story when we do cockpit view. Because I haven't had as much practice in that and is a slightly less powerful sidecar. So this is the most powerful. But what stopped myself with easy, you know. <laughs> Give myself a good chance of victory. But yeah, the other sidecar I'm doing has got less top speeds. But it makes up with for handing apparently, so we'll see. So if that's slightly better hand, it should be a bit better for me in cockpit view. But we'll see. So once again, breaking through there, I could maybe take that in sick, but I don't want the revs to tank too much. So we go to late apex. But remember, it's how it come with these corners as well. They're like, you don't want to get in early into the corner. Uh, so that's wide through the wall bridge. High crowd. Once again, saved it from that spin. As we're going wide, I had to like suddenly spin a bit to turn a bit too much, and that's you know almost caused us to get into the crowd. Like the wall in the way. It's, oh, getting close to the bank as well. That's the problem with being a bit too cautious, though. It can take you a bit out of the rhythm, which I think it has on this second lap. Maybe it's got to push it a bit more. Actually. Which stranger we might be a bit more comfortable with. As is Sarah's cottage. As 
So once again, right hander, but uphill a bit, so it's not too bad. I was trying to take that in third on that opening that we're taking it in second this time. And then up towards the Quonker body straight. I didn't say it properly, did I opening that? There you go, that's a bit better. I do love coming back to this game, like the look of it, like the circuits. It's just the unfortunate physics, that's the only thing. Oh, and career is very grindy in this, which I have not tried at all. I don't think I even got to the TT in career. It might have been in my first go around in this. That, when I showed it off, that shows you how grindy it was. Because that was after like 30 odd episodes as well. Through. Oh no! We'll go for hand these. Clip the ball on the inside always. A worry. We got it down to fourth there. Maybe I should have carried the speed in fifth and we wouldn't have turned so tight. Uh, to use McGuinness as an acceleration zone for Bargaro here. Oh, again. Flirting with disaster there. There you go. Survive this time with the bottom of the Garrow where, again, it just gets so light. It's very hard to balance. Sidecar through that. Let's go through this wonderful section. The you know, section that's grown on me. There's double right, double left. I remember when I first, many moons ago, first in this game went through there, I was like, what the hell am I meant to be doing for it? I have no idea. But now you realise it's just one flowing section and it's like, oh, okay. And like the first part of that right hand is just slowing down, the second part you carry the speed, first part of the left you carry the speed and then you're accelerating through the with a second left. It is pretty glorious. It's like to have the brake. Oh no. That crest. Trying to turn slightly over the crest. It's okay. It's okay, they, they went into the field, you know. Managed to jump out quickly, just roll into the field. It's okay. Much better than handies where they know they landed in the middle. Or bike landed in the middle of the two of them. Obviously. That's why they're okay. Uh, I think this is Alpine Cottage, isn't it? I can't remember which one is Alpine Cottage, right? Really, if it's this right hand or the right hander before Corey bends. There's uh, what? Must have clipped the pavement. I did not feel like I was clipping the pavement though. Obviously the passion was dangling their feet. That's the issue, isn't it? <laughs> so you got over the bridge. Again, don't want to carry too much speed. A bit like in real life, but the reason for not carrying too much speed here is because, again, weight issues. Like, we'll just be flipping over if we carry too much speed over there. So I can realize like where they have to look after the suspension and you know shocks and everything. Make sure there's not much too much decompression after that bridge section, which is always a way, especially for the super bikes, having six laps round here in their race. So yeah, I think we've actually matched our crashes from the opening up, so we've got to keep it clean from now on. As we head towards Solby Strait once again. It's amazing how 
for road racing course as well. Our, just everything just flows wonderfully together, these roads. It's almost like they were made for racing on, it is just wonderful. So we've got a heavy braking for Solby Bridge. Yeah, you see, I had it slow enough that I could take a bit more of a sharper turn there, so... Towards Ginger Hall, notch out for the bumps to the left there. And again, very bumpy through this section. Break very early for this left. Because even if you're going downhill there, and then it kind of plateaus a bit on that kind of apex. So the cyclo can just understeer wide into the edge on the exit, so you've got to be careful of that. Yeah, there's not been a good lap so far. Let's try and make up for it in the second half of this lap. And let's remember about the corners coming up through it. I think we were too quick for the right through this corner before. There it goes. Nicely slowed down. You can break left because there's a left-hander coming up <laughs> rather than a right-hander. Let's go through Churchtown. Nice little section of fans there to the right. Uh, so, again, just clipping the pavement slightly, touched it. Again, I blame it on the passenger. Totally dangling her feet again. Alright. This is danger territory, of course, because we're not going to hit 20 minutes at that time unless we start really pushing it. But if we start really pushing that, it increases crashes, so... That's one of the unique balances of this of this TT is that okay you've got the struggle between crashing and time in you know lots of different almost every type of racing but they're around a course like this in this format where you got you've got no one around here we can't see if we're doing better or worse than the sidecars around us here. Just makes it much more difficult to judge how well we're doing. All we've got is that time in the top right to tell us if we're doing well. Even in, that can be a bit deceiving. But that target of me doing the, like maybe a 20-30 that time this Think, oh that's okay but no it might actually be slow so opponents are doing quicker just don't actually know until you cross the finish line yeah we've got to push 110% till then again right anders be careful through though it I kind of have had a couple of crashes as that though, like clipping the pavement like that. I've not been doing that in practice as well. I've been like actually pretty good at staying away from the pavement. So yeah, I can't believe that. Just breaking deep into the gooseneck. Like the only right hander we can actually attack on the course, so. I say we're not doing too bad though, looking at that time wise, we're around 14 minutes this lap. And we're into the countryside, into the fan out section, around Joey's. Got around what, five, six minutes of the lap left. Kind of like two thirds of the way through the lap here, so we're not actually looking too bad, I don't think time wise, but got a hit a lot of racetrack to go until we go on to the final lap. Guff is more very important with how bumpy it is as well to break early there and just ride the speed through that. Oh, I'm always so nervous through there as well. Let's head onto Mountain Mile. That's such very tight 
Like, you've got to be very precise through there. Alright, but we can have a bit of a breather here. And we got ourselves here for the final section of the lap. Just like got ourselves, look at the passenger, he's having to do lots of work. Nice for the driver though. <laughs> That second apex get hard on the power. Was oh, that a radio tower to the right? Just noticed that for the first time. Okay, we've got to watch out for the bumps on like the first go round it. We we'll get too wide. Just a slight confidence lift. Again, very bumpy through there, but we can still take it and sit and just flat out through the veranda, hopefully. Again, there's a bit of bumps there on the left hand side of the road, so you have to be careful of that. Right, towards Black Cut. Get down the fifth. Back up the sip as we head towards the bungalow. Definitely I've been getting more confident at this section the more we go through this section as well, as that's a bit wide. Ideal time in that to do that. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been more confident as I run wide into the freaking bungalow. But yeah, it's probably the section we've improved the most, I would, fit, I would say. This section. Let's go down to four. Luckily, Brady Well is a left-hander as well, so it's not... Not as bad, I would say. As it perhaps is in real life here and all the riders and everyone talk about it. Let's go through Jukes. It is like, it's a nice little, what, 33rd milestone as well. At least that's what it said in the program. I was surprised in the program, it didn't have like, only have like half the corner names. Thought it'd be a bit more like this last section only got a couple for this like last section from windy corner to the end i thought there'd be a, a few more only got like chapel gate and hillberry and brandish that's about it really oh and signpost as well of course let's go through keppel gate have to be much quicker through that Past Kate's Cottage. Was Craig Nabar for the penultimate time. Break around the sign on the left. He'd probably break on it, but again, being a tight, bumpy right hand at the end of it, we want to break slightly early just so we can get the sidecar into the apex for once, into that corner. We're stepping apex we want to hit. Look how bumpy it is. Yeah, I think we're like 10 seconds slower than our opening lap at the moment. So about the hill, hillberry, around the 19 minute mark. I think we did it just before on the opening lap, so... Get down to fourth. It's definitely a corner that on the bikes you can push. Maybe take it in fifth and you know just drop down the gear, carry speed through there, but in the sidecar definitely have to break early, get it down to fourth and just be cautious through that. Uh, so that's the rear brake. Well it's not rear brake, is it on these? It's like kind of like handbrake or whatever it is. That's what it's called. So actually that time's going to be similar. We can make it through here in one piece. Not turning. Why can't we just go, you know, that way instead? <laughs> like, 
Why do you have to go over the bridge? <laughs> Oh, it's actually going to be similar that time, so it's not too bad actually, and I thought it was much slower. But yeah, we did keep it clean in the second half of that, so it's around, what, 20, 26 that lap as we head on to the final lap of the race. Going for glory. The first sidecar race. Oh, and we lose it over Argo's Leap and Bray Hill. Too much to the right. I talk, again, and a right hand has got us. Tried to take it flat like the previous lap, but this time, I was only just turned slightly, like, I'm literally talking a centimetre more than on the, open it, on the previous lap, and that's that was enough. As I said, you've got to be precise with your movements on this. No room for error. Uh, let's keep it in third and down the second for the second part. Definitely say I can take that in third if I was just in full flow, but we weren't on that previous lap and we're just... After that, you know, early crash in the final lap, we just want to keep it, you know, nice and tidy. Let's go for Union Mills. A break where, I guess that's like where Pottle got fixed. I guess that's where we break. So Union Mills, get down to third. Lift slightly on the exit because there's a bump through that left hander as well. Because again, if you get on the power too early, you're flipping. There you go, blue banner cry. Do we there? Nah. Nah, I'm gonna do it for that, good like. I let down all my fans. Let down everyone. I'm going to do it flat. Nah, that was alright. I felt like I could do it flat actually if I just carried the speed. But again, because of that early crash on his lap, I just wanted to see it through the corner. Which is never a bad strategy around it. Sometimes you know, probably you should employ a lot more in, in racing games in general. Just see it through the corner rather than say like in Ray and me trying to like slide the back end out and crash into a tree which is one of my favourite pastimes and we're doing it in a sidecar apparently so, you know even using the brakes through here just so I could get a good exit Get up sit gear a bit early before we head to the bridge. All the corners we've actually been confident the whole race. Hitting our marks just before it kind of rises up slightly there in the shadow. Get it down to fourth. And you actually carry the speed nicely through the corner. Let's go through the hall for an angle For Banner Crane. My favourite corners. Bump is all hell. But again, one we've been doing okay for it. And I was again a bit like the opening that, but again, the rear end wanted to get out a bit on the, the bump, so we make it through safely. And flat out. As we head towards, I forget the name of the corner here. There's another bridge here. And yeah, I forget the section here before the all bank. Yeah, get it down to fifth. Again, we can feel the rear trying to... Rear tire trying to spin up there. So the late apex. Take the wall bank. Oh! We actually got it down to second, you saw there. That's a nice, gentle flip there. 
Well, it's just the bump again taking us out. I don't think there's anything I could actually do there to even weight wise to correct the passenger. That was just going to be a crash if the line was taken there. Alright, that's two down already this lap. We've got to, again, just like previous lap, operation clean for the remaining two thirds of this lap. But that's the problem I was having in practice when. When I have a crash, it kind of escalated. I had the laps of like horrible laps mostly. <laughs> with lots of crashes, but you know, now that we're in the in the racing, in the race, definitely have restrained ourselves much better. I see there's only been four crashes each on the first two laps, which is very good for me, so <laughs> we'll take that. Let's head down the quonk here, I've already straight for the final time. Again, a corner I want to take flat out. You can definitely take that flat out on the Super Sport. But I've got to take it like the Super Bikes, have a slight lift into there. Let's go through more of the news for the final time. Drop down the gear. To the right. So right through the left. Towards hands, these. Now, what do we take this corner in? Oh! Well, we're taking it in fourth now. As we click the bank on the left hand side, that was stupid. Again, he's dangled his feet out as only the passenger, you know, he's like trying to kick the bank on the way through. <laughs> Getting all the driver excuses out here, which is just blame the passenger for every crash. So you go through McGuinnesses. I think I've got Gorse Lee wrong as well. Sorry, I think I mentioned it way too early. We'll go through Bar Garrow. Alright, can we survive the second part? I feel like just dabbing the brakes actually might slow it down and off. Yeah, there we go. So we didn't get any air to make it through. But yeah, it's free crashy. We, we have to keep it clear if you want to get close to the 20 minute lap time. I'd love to break it, that'd be very nice on this fight or that, but I don't know, we've had three crashes already, I don't think that's on the cards. We've got a good run through. It's like, like Westwood, I think it is. Towards Douglas Road. All the way down to third. Again, through a right hander, so again, we're breaking early, being cautious. Then through Kurt Michael, it is just totally flat for it. Utterly insane. Even in a sidecar, it's totally flat for it. Just slight lift there past the gas station or petrol station. Slight lift over this crest. Break early. Down to fifth. Because again, wormed on the previous lap. Straighten it up. You saw the old passenger like over there, you know, that is like hand out was touching the wall there. Alright, let's try and get through here without clipping the frickin' pavement or the trees. Again, another right hander. I think all of crashes have been on right handers this right this lap. Okay, that matches the four crashes from our previous attack, previous laps, though. So you can't have any more. As so the hands are starting to cramp as well, gripping the controller too tight. That's what's happening. Slight lift over the bump. Great, nice and early for the bridge. Barely made it over the bridge. If we did, we went any slower, we probably would have flipped. Yeah, so I remembered Kay had touch more speed over the bridge in the second race. Very interesting how the second race goes. As I said, I don't think I'd be as good or as consistent that time wise. 
because this is the bike and you have mostly been using but it's not been too terrible so we've not been near that 20 minute that time but we've not been sliding 20 minutes 30 seconds which I think is still on track with our opponents so We're losing out, so in the final sixth of the race, down Solby straight past the church for the final time. Now we're just preparing for the for the bridge. Spot on our braking point on the right hand hat side. It is that house. There we go, get nicely over the bump, all the way down the second. Was Ginger Hall breaking early? Can we feel the bumps on that occasion? Must be a much better line we took there. Get all the way down the third. Don't go into the trees like you have been doing. Slight lift over the bump there. Just be safe and then flat out in six. All the way to that right hand up. If I just go down again and then when we get out of the shadow break immediately. Go through church town. We get through in one piece. Have we got through in one piece through? I don't think we have. Which is not why at all. Down to fifth temporarily. Down to fifth here. Just try and make it through. This is a very like tricky section you got all these bends a bit like koi bends but not as flowing I was a bit disjointed the flow through there and it's just a bit off-putting heading into that final right left Let's go through schoolhouse and seeing that the bike's getting a bit restless now as well going all over these bumps into Parliament Square Past the dealership, pick out the car we're gonna wanna buy after this race with our winnings. Let's get it down the third. I'm surprised we caught through that right hand this whole race. It is not been kind to us, I would say. <laughs> oh no. Oh we broke the pattern. It's our fifth crash, everyone leaning on the bank, seeing us flip towards them and go... Not even bothered them, has it? You know, they're just chilling, like... Look at him go again. Let's go around Hounds, Ramsey air pin. Oh, people hiding in the trees there, that must be... Nice view, seeing how slow the bikes are. Good for a picture. And the sidecars as well. Right through the waterworks. Definitely feels like it'll be much more gentle on the rear. Just realised there's another crash through a right hander. Wonder what we've got to practice for the next race. So <laughs> the right hand is our bane of our existence. Let's go through the gooseneck. Took a bit of an early apex that time. No side to kind of straighten up. Unfortunately, so that was a bit messy. Definitely are feeling the fatigue here, like almost an hour. Well, you got the first lap of like not warming up, but, but you know get into the rhythm, second lap you're in the rhythm and further lap you're just trying to get it home here.
We're in the section we've been very clean though. Let's go through Guthrie's Memorial. doing time wise we're doing better than last lap I think which we did what a 2016 or something so we're doing better you never know we might be close to that 20 minute mark despite our extra fault Go for our favourite left hander. Now the bumpy as hell right hander. Going to do again a slight lift. And again a slight lift into this left. As you can see, it's showing how bumpy it is now on this final lap. Going to slight lift through the veranda here then. To make sure we're not. Losing traction with those rear tyre. And so you've got a big chunky tyre on the driver's wheel. Which must be feeling it on this line all that. Right up to sit. Slightly ease off. Start braking for the bungalow this time. We won't run wide. That's much better. Over the tram tracks. Up Wellwoods Heights, up to the highest point of the circuit, I think, is this. And we start dropping down afterwards. There we go. Now we drop down from Brady Well. All the way to the finish. Which isn't the lowest point of the circuit. I forget which is the lowest point of the circuit, though. I almost forgot Jeeps existed there. I was going flat out. I was. <laughs> I don't want to push it, but I probably shouldn't push it that much into that corner. Go through Windy Corner. Nice. Crowd look impressed with their folded hands, <laughs> folded arms everywhere. Can we push for our fingers hurting like a hell? Gonna have to ice the ice the fingers, ice the thumb after this, you know, like they do in real life, have the ice baths. Just do it with my hands instead. So we go past Kate's cottage, basically flat out as well in this final lap. Right. Can we break at the side maybe? Here we can. Lots of rear brake there. Break to the sign. Good exit. Everyone clapping their hands as well in the final lap. Well, not everyone. There are a couple of people clapping. Alright, there was one or two people clapping out of the hundreds of people there. But, you know, they were clapping alright. Well, it's for me, of course. Go through Brandish. Could maybe take that flat out. Again, just another confidence lift. Again, just because of we've synced that rear. Through Hillberry, as you can see, very cautious for Hillberry. That's so over the hour mark. I'm going to be far over the hour mark, though. signpost just over the bumps 
It's just going to be just over 61 minutes, which is way quicker than I've done in practice. So I think we're looking good. That's the final annoyance. Can we take this properly? Oh my god, we kind of did. Amazing. Over the bridge. And towards the line then. How will this first race end? Once again, beautiful clean last section of the lap. But what does it mean? It means victory! Of course it does! As he didn't do the quickest lap apparently, that goes to Gerard Taylor in fourth. And the cycle we're going to use in the second race, but my god we win! We get a TT under our belt. And a sidecar TT at that as well, as we've gone... What, two, two and a half minutes quicker than I've ever done as well in the race, so... There we go, turn up for the race. I only had... Yeah, I only had five crashes in on that final lap, so I was 13 in total during the race, which... Okay, maybe a bit too much for some people, but for me, I will definitely say that. As I said, in practice, I've had 13 crashes per lap at least, so... <laughs> did that whole, over a whole race distance. Extremely happy. As it's spray the champagne, shall we? Honestly, can't believe that we won that. I thought I'd be, I thought I choked it on the last lap. I have an extra crash. You know, in practice, yeah, we're doing lap times around 20 minutes, so really good. But it's always different in the race, and I didn't feel I was as good in the race as I was in practice. But we held it together. We did the unbelievable, which is actually win a DD race on this side goal, which. I can understand, as I said in the race, why there are those issues people have had with the side cars. They are very, very difficult to get used to. But we'll see if we can double up in the second sidecar race later where we'll be in a sidecar which does have as much pace, but is the best handing of the lot. So it's going to be interesting, different style with that sidecar compared to this one and see how we go. But I hope you enjoyed some more action from TT Odd of Man Week. Thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.